by the 1960s, scientists had determined that even simple cells are made of thousands of different types of proteins. And the function of these molecules derives from their highly complex three-dimensional shapes. The irregular shapes of some proteins allow them to catalyze or trigger chemical reactions because of the hand and glove fit that they have with other molecules in the cell. While other protein molecules form interlocking structural components. The individual parts of a bacterial motor, like this ring structure, are each made of either a single protein molecule or an assembly of proteins fitted together into a specific shape. These proteins consist of one or more chains containing hundreds or thousands of individual amino acids. Biologists have compared the 20 different amino acids used to build protein chains to the 26 letters of the English alphabet. Alphabetic letters can be arranged in a huge number of possible combinations and it's the sequential arrangement of the letters that determines whether you have meaningful words and sentences. If the letters are arranged correctly, you'll get meaningful text. But if they're not arranged correctly, you'll get gibberish. And the same principle applies for amino acids and proteins. There are at least 30,000 distinct types of proteins, each made of a different combination of the same 20 amino acids. They are arranged, like letters, to form chains, often hundreds of units long. If the amino acids are sequenced correctly, then the chain will fold into a functioning protein. Proteins are arranged in such a way that their amino acids collapse on one another and form an architecture that's pre-programmed by the hundreds of amino acids along the protein chain. So the order of those amino acids inside of a protein is essential to getting the right shape. This arrangement is critical. For if the amino acids are incorrectly sequenced, a useless chain forms, and instead of folding into a protein, it will be destroyed in the cell. As science reveals the intricate construction of proteins, origin of life researchers are confronted with a difficult question. Could amino acids floating in a primordial ocean have arranged themselves into protein molecules through purely random interactions? Obviously, it is very difficult to imagine how in the primordial oceans the amino acids could organize themselves one after another into the right sequence to form even the simplest protein. And a good way to think about this is to think about the English language and how difficult it would be to string together a meaningful English sentence by randomly placing the letters one after another. As an illustration, consider the difficulty of forming just one line of Shakespeare's play, Hamlet, by dropping Scrabble letters randomly onto a tabletop. Only one of 26 possible letters will work correctly at each of the 30 sites in the phrase. The probability of successfully assembling Shakespeare's classic line, by pure chance, is determined by computing 1 over 26 to the 30th power. The result is a staggering one chance in 2,810 trillion octillion. Yet while these odds are beyond comprehension, they seem almost reasonable when compared to the probability of randomly forming just one of the simplest protein molecules known to science. The smallest proteins in nature are comprised of about 100 amino acids. These chemical components must align in specific positions along a chain. Biologists have estimated that on a planet covered by a primordial soup, filled with complete sets of all 20 types of amino acids, the mystery of life's origin is still far from resolved. Let's just say that against all odds, against everything we know about science, you do get one hundred amino acid long protein by chance. What do you have? Well, you have one protein. That's it. We don't have life because even the simplest cell requires over six hundred proteins in order for it to be functional, in order for it to be alive. So mainstream scientists no longer think that 
life and the building blocks of life could originate by chance. They're now looking for a way to explain the building blocks and explain life's organization by some form of law or combination of laws that would allow that to happen. Chance is no longer an option. Similar structures nearly always have similar plans, in this case DNA. Similar bridges have similar blueprints. This hardly constitutes evidence that one fired the other or that they were erected by tornadoes. If you ever thoroughly understood everything on a jet, would that prove nobody designed it? No. You couldn't stand back and say, well, you know, because I understand it, therefore nobody made it. That is just flawed logic. See, if you understand how a machine operates, that has nothing to do with the origin of it. I understand the operation of a ballpoint pen. How the ink is in that little tube, you know, and the ball rolls around and it uses all sorts of different physical factors to draw the ink down. You know, there's capillary action used in a ballpoint pen. Does that prove a ballpoint pen happened by chance? No. Just because I understand it doesn't prove anything about the origin of it. And this is where some of these people get confused. They somehow think that operation and origin are related. So if I can understand how it works, that'll prove nobody made it. You can study the human body that way. It's a great way to learn biology. To study the circulation system. Study the integumentary system, the skin. Okay? Study the nervous system. And then how do these systems relate to each other? But understanding the systems has nothing to do with the origin of it. And again, one thing missing from one of these systems may stop the whole thing from working. How many people have a very complex nervous system? They have a brain, spinal cord, nerves going to every cell in the body, but there's a broken place right at the base of the neck because they had a little car accident, severed the nerve, now they're sitting in a wheelchair. Nervous system's still there, one thing's broken. Stops the rest of it from working. DNA sequences. This uh, fellow from uh, the annual, annual review of uh, ecology and systems uh, says, even with DNA sequence, we have no direct access to the process of evolution. So objective reconstruction of the vanished past can be achieved only by creative imagination. You have to imagine some kind of relationship based upon the sequence. 